A big thank you comes to you today from Dead Rabbit via Patreon for his long support of the channel. Jingataxius vs Maelstrom Wanderer. Uh, pretty slow, but we'll just have to hope that our opponent goes slow as well while he is on the play. Now turn one ramp spell from our opponent, which is always a blessing, so we're just aiming for the Arcane Signet, likely into deep analysis. If our opponent doesn't get down any mana docks, then we'll get down Jace the Mind Sculptor instead. And we see Gruel Signet instead. Could bounce that with the Serum Snare, but I think we need to be ramping as well. And yep, there's a Wood Elves, so there's the argument for us bouncing the Gruel Signet there, because unless they drop a land here, they wouldn't have been able to afford that. Shocking in the breeding pool, and holding that up for whatever reason. Wouldn't have thought they'd have a one mana counter spell, so maybe it's a worldly tutor that they're trying to hold up. Let's go for Jace the Mind Sculptor here against the 1-1, one -one. and we will go for the Brainstorm. Yeah, we can likely put Jingataxius in the way. Imprison in the Moon is really good against Maelstrom Wanderer, so we can go for the Jace and then the Serum Snare. Okay, not worldly, it was a mystical tutor from our opponent. And they went for a lightning bolt to deal with the Jace, that's fine with me. Better than it being a ramp spell into their commander. They have to cycle mana through the Gruul's Signet to pay for the lightning bolt, so down goes Jace. Okay, and they've got a hull breach as well against our Arcane Signet, so likely just deep analysis next turn. And we are on a 40 turn clock against that Wood Elves. We know one of the cards that we're drawing into with deep analysis, but we can send ourselves ahead a couple of turns with regards to card advantage. Okay, so getting into another island. Probably just our commander next turn, because we should be able to consistently keep seven cards in hand as it stands now. There's a castle Garen Brig, which will help get down their commander. And now a hunting wild, so uh, yeah, likely going to see the commander next turn. They fix their colours nicely there. Not worthy that they could have tapped this down for the lightning bolt, but decided not to, so I'm not sure why they're trying to hold this up. We draw into Teferi's Ageless Insight, which should help us even more. Go for the Djinn, and hope that the Ward 2 is going to be enough to protect it here. And our opponent does go in for the Maelstrom Wanderer, so Cascading twice. And the first one is Garrick Wildspeaker, be able to untap lands with that. And a Sylvan Carrier Tid as well, so basically just more mana. That's about as good as we could have hoped for. And the creatures do have haste, of course, so we take 7 commander damage here. Alright, a Nezahar we draw into. It would be good to be able to flip round our commander here. But I think imprisoning the moon onto their commander is going to be a good idea. Because we could flip this around and proliferate and bounce all the creatures, but obviously theirs has haste. So let's go imprisoned in the moon onto that thing. That cantrips us, because it is mana value 3 or greater. So we're still at 7 cards in hand. And then just decided to bounce the Garret with the Serum Snare, because that forces them to recast it next turn. So now we can start turning in sideways against our opponent and threatening commander damage of our own. And next turn we'll obviously draw into a card at the beginning of the turn, and that will put us on 7 and we can look at flipping this thing around. Not going to bounce the Wood Elves back to their hand when we do that, thankfully. Obviously could have held on to this for the Proliferate so that we could bounce all the creatures straight away but decided to have them recast the Garrick instead. And it looks like they've got a big spell that they can cast, one that they would hope to cascade into, I would think. No, just tapping into Garrick Wildspeaker, with six mana floating. Untapping two lands will make eight. And they go down to two cards in hand, that's an Ugin, so if they want to wipe out our Jingataxius, they're going to have to take out their own Garrick. And their own mana dork, they'll get rid of Imprisoned in the Moon, so they could just go Axis 3. And yeah, they do take out their own Garrick. Luckily, the Maelstrom Wanderer is still tapped. So I think we just need to keep threatening the Jingataxius here. So I think we need to get rid of the Ugin here. Go for the Psychosis Crawler, which is only a 4-4 at the moment, but it will get rid of the Commander. We're going to take another hit for 14 from the Maelstrom Wanderer, unfortunately. We're going to go up to 14, Commander, that is. So if they can give double strike here, we're done. Not attacking in at all, strangely. Would have thought you'd want to land commander damage as soon as you can. Three visits, two cards in hand. And cycling mana through the Castle Garen Brig allows our opponent into a Pathbreaker Ibex. Uh, yeah, that gives a buff. It also gives Trample as well, which is relevant. 
draw our card, Psychosis Crawler, we'll have our opponent lose a life. So we could go for Teferi's Ageless Insight here. We'll draw six cards off the Brainstorm. So we could maybe look at making a really good blocker against the Maelstrom Wanderer. That allows them to recast it, but makes them less likely to swing in at us as well. So maybe we just continue to set up here, unfortunately. One card left in our opponent's hand and holding up priority a little bit there. So we'll go Brainstorm first of all and see if we want to go for Deep Analysis onto the cards that we draw into. Not that bothered about keeping the Jace because obviously that's a win con for us. So we'll draw six cards. Yeah, we'll put the Jace and a land on top. Our opponent gets pinged for a bunch there. And we can play out the Mana Crypt for obviously some more mana. Shuffle those cards away with the Polluted Delta. Which is exactly why those cards are in the deck. Because it's obviously a monocolored deck, but we can use those fetches as a shuffle effect. Play the Deep Analysis, we'll take some life. But we will draw four cards here for only two mana. And ping our opponent a bunch again. There is a reality shift. So, so yeah, we just forego the floating mana here. We've got nine cards in hand. So we just have to discard down to hand size, I think, because we want to hold up the Arcane Denial and the reality shift. But we've got a decent blocker here, at the very least. So we'll lose the Swiftfoot Boots and... Yeah, we've got means of card draw, so we'll get rid of the Flooded Strand. And Moti into play now is going to Cascade, and it'll make all their other big stuff Cascade as well. Revealing a bunch of stuff and getting themselves into a Chromatic Lantern. They went past Aurora Phoenix, and Hullbreaker Horror is good to know about. So now, do they want to swing in with the Maelstrom Wanderer? Yeah, they should. So I think we can Reality Acid here, just so that we... Don't take another hit of commander damage. It's not good to have them recast the commander. That's why the Imprison in the Moon was so good. But we did make them use their Ugin to get rid of it at least. So the Pathbreaker Ibex gets buffed up. That is six damage to us here. Unless we want to trade. Yeah, I don't think I do want to trade against that. I think we might be able to do a decent amount next turn. And the Psychosis Crawler will be able to hold back the Commander as long as we get to flip round the Jingataxius. Winning the Mana Crypt flip helps. And we draw into an island, that helps as well. So throw that out straight away, let's go for Jingataxius. So that gives us Devotion to blue of four. Meaning we can tap this down for a decent amount of mana. And we'll preordain here. We'll draw two cards off that of course. Alright, an Omniscience is worth keeping, so is a Mana Vault, so put both of those on top. We'll draw both of them, thanks to the enchantment. So let's go for the Mana Vault here. We can put that mana into our Commander's ability, which means we'll have to ponder, because we do need seven cards in hand. Alright, back to basics is backbreaking against our opponent. So it can be Unwind, Ancient Tomb, and the back to basics on top for us to draw into. We draw two cards, so now we can flip round the Jingataxius. I'm really seeing the power of the Teferi's Ageless Insight. We have a no max hand size here. I'm going to draw 14 cards, would be seven because of the seven cards in our hand, but drawing twice as many of course, and that's a lot of damage to our opponent. So if we have a means of bouncing this out of the way, we might be able to get them, but didn't get into any more fast mana unfortunately, so yeah, we're just holding up the... An offer you can't refuse, I think. Just going to hold back the Psychosis Crawler against their commander. They might be able to give it Double Strike or something, which would see the end of us. Don't think we got into any more means of proliferate either, unfortunately. So not going to be able to get the Chapter 3 on this next turn, most likely. Okay, our opponent rolling the dice here. A Maelstrom Wanderer. And it cascades twice off the Maelstrom Wanderer, once off the Emoti. And they get themselves straight into a Gwenna, which we're not all that worried about. Although it is noteworthy that they have a card in hand and it does have haste once the commander hits. There is more mana in a Mana Crypt, so yeah, you do have to get the balance right in a Maelstrom Wanderer deck, but you can get pretty unlucky with some of the Cascades. Alright, and A is a Pandrel as well. That just doubles the power and toughness, but it doesn't give any kind of evasion. These are Pandrel Cascades as well, of course, so <laughs> there's an Itali. Which will also cascade. All of this has haste. Plus counter goes on the Gwenna thanks to Atali being cast. Alright, and there's a Cyclonic Rift. Luckily we've got 
shroud on the big creature, so shouldn't be too worried about that, although they can bounce the Great Synthesis. So yeah, that's what they go for here. Let's go for an off you can't refuse, seeing as how they've only got one card in hand. And they're going to have a decent chunk of mana this turn anyway. I doubt they're going to be shy on whatever it is that they want to cast. They might be able to get us anyway here by going wide, thanks to the Pathbreaker Ibex and getting those big creatures into play. Yeah, they probably go wide on us regardless here, unfortunately. We were just one turn shy on them. So Zapandril doubles the Parent Toughness first, which means they only get bigger once the Pathbreaker swings in. So some good hits off the top there is enough to see this game through, I think. See what they get from the Atali. Just exiled a couple of lands off the top with the Atali. So we'll block the Commander, which is now a 28-24, so it'll get rid of the Psychosis Crawler. And that's us done. Go down to minus 119 and 15 points of Commander damage. So it's a good game to my opponent. I think that was a decent showing for us as well. We got to show what the deck can do. But we were just a bit too slow against the team of player, unfortunately. Playing against partners Arden and Bruce Tarr this time, and that is a pretty awful hand for us. Okay, that's looking yeah, slightly better as long as we can keep our commander in play. So we'll throw away the omniscience. A tap land from our opponent, we draw into contentious plan. So yeah, just aiming for our commander next turn, I think. Unless something else comes along. Leon in Shikari, and that will allow our opponent to play equip spells at instant speed, or equip costs at instant speed. Alright, an Arcane Denial. Um, yeah, we could counter a decent equipment or something next turn. I think I'd rather just start wailing on my opponent, so crack that for an island. And then it's Jeweled Lotus in for the Jinga Taxius. So now we've got a 5-5 with Ward 2 for our opponent to contend with. They could have a Swords or something and still get us next turn. Or at least get the Commander. Alright, just the tap land for our opponent bodes well. Then it's a Steel Shaper's Gift, so uh, yeah, the problem with those Tutors is we can see them coming. We know what they're going to be playing within the next few turns. If we, can, if we feel as though we can predict what they're doing, we'll be able to counter it. And it's a Skull Clamp from our opponent, so not going to be able to counter it. Alright, and an island is a pretty good get for us. So, uh, yeah, we're just holding up the Arcane Denial and the Rapid Hybridization, I think. Arcane Denial can obviously draw us a card. And I will swing in towards a Leonin Shikari with a Skull Clamp on it. They've only got two cards in hand, so I want my opponent to stick around, but I'm not going to be held hostage by Skull Clamp anyway. Alright, a Magus of the Wheel from our opponent. I don't mind them using a decent chunk of their turn next turn to get that going. So I'll allow that into play here. And then Skull Clamp onto that thing, yeah. So they're going to sacrifice it next turn, draw even more cards. I mean, they're refilling their hand anyway, so... Lean in Shikari, tapping down. So that means that we're going to get Commander damage through next turn, most likely. Yeah, I'm not in love with my hand, that's why I uh, allowed that down. A deep analysis isn't the best... So, probably still holding up Arcane Denial. Are they just going to crack the Magus straight away? Probably. So, let's try and make a land drop this turn. We'll go Contentious Plan. Okay, gets us into Arcane Signet, which we can't play thanks to the lack of lands here. So, we're just holding up the Rapid Hybridization again. Swing in towards my opponent. Okay, surprisingly, they're blocking with the Magus. So, yeah, just decided to take the Skull Clamp trigger. I think Skull Clamp and Leon in Shikari is going to be a bit of a pain for us, so depending on what they do here, probably blow that up by the end of the turn. Now an Arcane Signet for our opponent. They have a Maze of Ith as well, which helps against our commander. I think Ward helps with abilities though. Yeah, it doesn't show me in the reminder text, but I think Ward triggers on abilities and spells. There's the Arden. So we'll let them go through to the beginning of combat here, see what they want to put the Skull Clamp onto. Yeah, putting it on the Leonin Shikari, so they do want to keep hold of that one. We'll just blow it up here in response before it gets the Skull Clamp put onto it. They are going to have enough power and toughness to be able to gang up on the Jinga Taxius. And thanks to not going for that wheel, they're down to two cards in hand. The Skull Clamp's going to be pretty useless to them, as long as we don't swing into it. Land is excellent there, so that means we can go deep analysis, as much as I'd like to get that Arcane Signet down. We draw a card, because it has mana value 3 or greater. 
Alright, our Hamrits archive is good. We're going to have seven cards in hand by the end of the turn, which means we're set up for our Jinga Taxius next turn. Drawing into some ramp is good. If our opponent manages to get rid of our commander, then we'll be able to recast it with that mana, hopefully. Not worthy that there is a Hanway of Battlements in play now. And there is the Bruce Tarl, giving the Frog Lizard double strike and lifelink. So not going to block that. Arden puts the Skull Clamp on itself by the looks of it. I would think they put it on the Frog Lizard and swing in, try and get us to block. So I'm not sure what kind of combat trick they'd have for Arden here, but I don't want them to have the card draw anyway, so we'll just take a big hit here. So we go down to 28. The Skull Clamp is re-equipped onto the blocker. So it's now a 4-2 Bruce Tal. A land is good there. So we can drop a land and still go for the Jinga Taxius here. So we're exiling that and returning it as a saga. And that means that we draw seven additional cards. And we do have no max hand size as long as the saga is in play. Uh, okay, clearing some decent stuff off the top. Back to basics is probably the best thing there. Not sure I'll play it against my opponent though because it seems to be a more casual build. So next turn, hopefully, we get to bounce all of their creatures. And obviously the frog token will evaporate then. <coughs> a Rayav, Master Smith, two cards left in hand. Uh, throwing haste onto that, so I'm guessing they don't have any equipment or anything. We're seeing a distinct lack of equipment here, unfortunately. They're going to have double strike on the Bruce Tal from the Rayav. And yeah, Arden is going to deal commander damage as well. They are two separate points of commander damage. So whichever puts us on the biggest amount is the one that the client will track. Don't think we've taken any from Bruce Tal yet, so we'll be on 8 Commander. Everything swinging in towards us. Luckily we haven't seen any haste from our opponent, apart from the Hamware Battlements, which taps down two lands if they want to give something haste. Bruce Tal will give the Frog Lizard double strike and lifelink, so not giving it to the Arden. And we plummet down to 10. Luckily, going to bounce everything here, there is a Shark Typhoon. And yeah, if we drop it back to basics, our opponent's just going to scoop, I imagine. So maybe we just concentrate on ramp here, just in case our opponent manages to get rid of the Great Synthesis. So that's Arcane Signet and the Thought Vessel for an unlimited hand size. And we can hold up the Cryptic Command here, I think. Or maybe we just go Arcane Denial if we're desperate and get down the Sapphire Medallion. Yeah, so that will allow us a deep analysis for two life and one mana. Or is it three life? Three life and one mana. So, really hoping our opponent can't get us here. We do have a one mana counter spell held up in Arcane Denial. But the more cards we have in hand, the more we benefit from the Great Synthesis going off next turn. And hopefully our opponent doesn't scoop on us. Yep, there's the Bruce Tal. And, yeah, it can give itself double strikes, so we can't have that. Because they can put the Skull Clamp on it, and they'll have enough to get rid of us, so... That's exactly why we held up the counter magic in Arcane Denial. They'll draw two off that. Obviously the buff from the Skull Clamp would have given it four power. And then Double Strike and Haste would have taken us down to minus one there. So just seeing the Arden come back into play from hand instead. Three cards left for our opponent. And might as well equip up the Skull Clamp with the Arden's ability. So here we go, our opponent going to draw a couple of cards. We will draw one as well. Okay, and that's Consecrated Sphinx, really good one to draw into before the Great Synthesis goes off here. Draw into a Sol Ring as well. So, Chapter 3, we can cast any number of spells from our hand here. So that can be our Hamrit's Archive, the Extra Turn card, Dig Through Time, Back to Basics, Metallurgic Summonings, and Shark Typhoon aren't going to get the triggers, unfortunately. I will hold on to Reality Shift. Seagate Restoration is going to draw us a bunch of cards, as is the Consecrated Sphinx. We'll hold on to the Sol Ring, because it just means that we draw more cards from the Seagate Restoration. Won't blame my opponent for scooping here, but I hope he plays it out, just so that we can show all of you what is going on here with this deck. So, drawing a whole bunch more, just clearing a bunch of lands off the top. But Ottawa is decent, Memory Deluge, and Jace the Mind Sculptor in 1v1 in a scenario like this is really good. It's not worthy that we can flip the Jinga Taxius back round again if we want to. Uh, let's see here, there is a Flow of Knowledge is decent. Fierce Guardianship is worth having as well, because that's a free counter spell for us. And then it's an extra turn. 
and our Hammer X Archive is going to have us draw multiple cards as opposed to just one or two here and there which is obviously really stupidly good with Flow of Knowledge so now it can be a Nykthos Shrine to Nyx which will not untap during the untap step thanks to the um, thanks to the Back to Basics Shark Typhoon gonna start triggering on all of our non-creature stuff most of the spells in the deck are non-creature so just for the fun of it here why don't we flip round our commander again we're gonna lose some coloured pips for the Nykthos but I don't know if I'm gonna want to flip it this turn anyway and we'll draw cards equal to twice the number of cards that are in our hands so we need to be careful but there we have an omniscience so maybe we can afford that here I'm not sure we can actually we do have an extra turn spell after this there's a high tide as well so let's go for that metallurgic summonings triggers on instants and sorceries shark typhoon is on non-creatures so we'll just tap out here 35 cards left in the deck we get 12 mana from the nykthos and the double lands and we'll get down this omniscience shark typhoon makes a massive shark we do get an extra turn after this of course and there is another extra turn card in our possession so yeah as soon as they see the omniscience it's pretty much writing on the wall we were going to draw a heap more cards there and just try and get into a means of a lab man win probably this game because we're down to very few cards left in the deck here. Yeah, it, they weren't anywhere close. There's three of them in here. We've got Jay Slabman and Thassa's Oracle, but would have drawn into them eventually. We just need to make sure that they're not all on the bottom of the library, which would be pretty unlucky. But you get the gist. I wasn't really all that excited for the Great Synthesis and Jenga Taxius when I first read it in the spoilers, but after playing against it, that one game that you've probably seen by now, I was actually pretty eager to try it and... Yeah, it's an awesome deck, so hopefully you all enjoy it. Deck list is in the description as ever. Massive thank you to the patrons for supporting the channel. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.